Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, third module, the curator module. You've seen the scenario, you've seen the objectives, the outcomes, and now we're going to go behind the design and mm -hmm. learn a bit from the main developer, the lead designer of the curator module. It's Peg French from uh, a program manager at eCampus Ontario and also of Mohawk's, is it the Center for Teaching and Learning? It is. And title currently unknown. Yes, they keep changing it, so I'm not sure what I'm going to be called when I go back. <laughs> okay, uh, but well, thank you for joining me. Oh, my pleasure. Um, so we're just going to ask you a little bit about about kind of the uh, origin story of this module. So can you can you just maybe tell us a little bit about it and what you were what you were going for? Sure. So I think the curator module is a little bit tricky because given the amount of information out there, people will kind of think they have a handle on this one, maybe more so than some of the other ones. Mm -hmm. So getting them to kind of stop and reflect and think about what they're actually putting into their courses and realizing that for every decision they make, they're not including uh, a whole bunch of other things. So be very aware that kind of, that every action of selection is almost some people call it censorship that's a little bit harsh i think but mm -hmm. um, just getting them to think a little more critically about the resources they're including in their courses as well as maybe give them a few more skills to do a better search and to assess that search and their findings so that's basically it that's awesome it's it's a, such a helpful module um what can you tell us a little bit about your the process you went through to design it um well it was kind of easy for me in the sense that I got to relive my, my library days. I hadn't been a librarian, working as a librarian for a bit. Okay. But it's basically what we would have been doing in a basic research skills information session or two with a few more applications for the educator versus the student. But it's, it's the same skills. I mean, you're trying to instill them in your students and you have to have them first. So it's mm -hmm. kind of the first step of that. Wonderful. Does, um, I wonder if like some people, maybe some people think it wasn't for me, but um, does it come across as, at first as a little basic, but it, even, even so it's important to go there, right? Yes. So like I said, most people think it's something, well, I just Google it, right? And I get the stuff and I, I choose from that first list of resources and uh, I'm good to go. So that whole idea of um, assessing it for, we call it the crap test that they'll find out about but the different aspects that you would want to consider when you're choosing a resource. It's almost harder now, um, way back when, when I went to school, um, <laughs> <laughs> finding the resources was the hard part. You had to dig in the basement with the periodicals and you found that, that one resource and that was wonderful, but it took forever because there probably only was one, uh, the one resource. Mm -hmm. Now there's 20 million. So how to figure out, refine your search. So instead of 20 million, you get a more manageable result. Mm -hmm. And then once you have those manageable results, the best of the best kind of thing. It's, and how can you go wrong with such a great acronym as the CRAP <laughs> <test>? <laughs> <Turn through. laughs> uh, So what do you hope people um, leave after they leave with after they do the module? What do they come away with? Um, now, I'm not a big Ronald Reagan fan at all, but I keep going back to the um, trust but verify, but you kind of switch it up to don't trust and verify. Okay. I, I would almost go into it super critical, mm -hmm. not believing anything, because I think we have the tendency, whatever washes over us, we kind of are used to taking in. So to me, almost swing the pendulum way the other way, for a while anyway, and you have to question everything. and so And so much so... I was forgetting to do it myself, so I had it tattooed on my arm to question. <laughs> so that's a good reminder for me as well. Uh, my daughter Lucy calls question marks mystery marks. Awesome. Even so better. That just adds a little mystery. And um, so we hope people leave here being complete skeptics. Is that right? But, but <laughs> I, <laughs> the connotation of skeptic is so awful. But I think, yes, right, right now in these times, sure. Good. Huge skeptics. <laughs> and one more question. This is a hard hitting question. Uh -oh. What's your best pickleball tip? Oh, it's be very aware of the kitchen. 
the you kitchen. can't stand in the kitchen. Okay. And I love the kitchen. I love being in every kitchen. So to try to stay out of the kitchen is very difficult for me. And it's also the best place in tennis. You go there to smash it. And I like doing that. You can't do that in pickleball. Okay. Happy. So that's the kitchen. Yes. Out of the kitchen. You can't be in the kitchen. That is not the answer I expected. Uh, thank you so oh, much. <laughs> what did you expect? I don't know. I didn't oh, know. Okay. You know we we're going to talk about a kitchen. That's great. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's all I wanted to know. Thank you so much for, for the help. No problem. And I'll see you in the module. Yeah. Enjoy, everybody. Thank you. Bye.